Welcome to the CBF Gathering. I'm Davida Parnell, and I'm the director of CBF's Young Baptist Ecosystem. What is a Young Baptist Ecosystem, you might be wondering? Well, it's the life-giving environment that we are seeking to create that allows Young Baptists to be nurtured, to grow, and to thrive. This ecosystem requires interaction and collaboration, not only within our office, across departments, but with important partners like Passport Camps, theological institutions, state and regional organizations, and of course, the local church. Practically speaking, this looks like events, retreats for students like Say La Vie and our seminarian retreat, summer and semester internships like student.go and student.church, scholarships for seminarians, CBF days, which are learning opportunities on campuses for students, learning and fellowship opportunities at General Assembly, our fellows program, which is an initiative for those in their first call post-seminary, and our 25 Young Baptists to Know initiative. Even this semester, we've tried to start something new called discernment groups for Young Baptists seeking God's wisdom and direction for their future. This is a season of thanksgiving, and I'm especially thankful for the Young Baptists that are among us that I get to work with. They are challenging, they are creative, they are bold, they take risks, they're activists, they're passionate, and they challenge us to be a more faithful church. Tonight in this gathering, you will be introduced to several young Baptists who have found a home within the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. I pray that you will listen with open hearts and minds to what they have to offer. Greetings, CBF family. What a pleasure it is speaking with you all and gathering with you all in times like this. My name is Ira Neely, and I am a native of West Helena, Arkansas. I have served alongside some amazing people during my three years of service with Student at Go. And my connection with CBF started when a friend of my sister called asking would she mind going with a group of people to read books to children in Lakeview, Arkansas. My sister, of course, did not take it, so I did. I got in the car of Catherine Bunn, aka Cat, and since that day, my life has changed. From interning at First Baptist Richmond to sharing the gospel alongside my higher ground family and kids across America, CBF has helped me every step of the way. Just a little about me, I attended the prestigious Coahoma Community College, majoring in music education while trying to figure out if ministry would be the next step for me in some capacity. So with the help of Molly Palmer, I was sitting in a room full of instruments interviewing with Lori and Taisha via Skype for a golden ticket to National Baptist Memorial Church. Since then, I have experienced and learned what it means to understand the calling of mission, service, and being the hands and feet of God. During that time, my faith was strengthened and my hope was restored, all through the help and impact of Student Echo. Each year after serving with Student Echo, I brought back new skills and mindsets to better myself and the things that I did. Even though coming back to real life was hard and sometimes frustrating, I was simply reminded of the word be. Be honest, be present, be mindful. My last year of service with Student Echo really pushed me to look beyond the four walls of a church and to remember that the church is for all people. I served at the Andrew P. Stewart Center and met with some amazing people while serving there. But seeing the behind the scenes work of a nonprofit with the mission of service and educating families about life and rights was simply amazing. But not only just that, it was the impact of being at my first General Assembly where honestly those moments of us embracing the truth of the conflicted past of this world and realizing that there must be change was even better. It started a push for justice, peace, and equality for all people, but also for people that look and sound like me. So when I returned to Mississippi feeling empowered and led to be and do something, I got back in contact with my former choir director. After speaking with him, 
and him knowing about my new skills and experiences that CBF student I go had allowed me to learn and to take in. He allowed me to cast a vision for a piece that speaks to all if you allow yourselves to listen. Just like my time with Student Night Go, I listened, I learned, and now I am living knowing that I took a vow to serve God's people. Anyhow. Hey CBF family, my name is Danny Prada. I'm the pastor of Heartway Church in South Florida. Uh, last year I was given the wonderful honor of being commissioned as one of the church starters at General Assembly. And it's been about a year now that we've had this partnership with the CBF and I just gotta say from the bottom of my heart, I'm so grateful and thankful for the love and the support that we have received as a community over this last year. I remember there being a time when I felt so alone, I felt like I was on an island all by myself. And so to be welcomed and embraced by this family of churches has gone such a long way. It's reinvigorated me and it's made me very hopeful for the future. Uh, I, I want to begin today by sharing a little story about a man uh, by the name of Abba Antony, one of the desert fathers. Well, one day Abba Antony was hanging out with his students. Uh, they were resting from their work, experiencing some leisure time. They weren't doing much of anything. And as they were hanging out, enjoying one another's company, there was a man who was walking by. This man was a hunter. And he noticed that these monks were just sitting around enjoying themselves. And for some reason, he was disappointed by that. Because he believed that uh, people of this stature should be above this kind of leisurely activity. They should be devoting themselves to the work of God and to prayer. And so he decided to uh, tell Abba Antony himself about this frustration and disappointment. And as they were having a conversation, Abba Antony uh, made a very odd request of him. He asked him to take an arrow from his bag and shoot it from his bow. And so that's what the man did. He took an arrow and he shot it. After he shot that first arrow, though, uh, Abba Antony asked him to do it again. So he shot a second arrow, and after he shot that second arrow, Abba Antony asked him to do it again for the third time. 
And so he shot an arrow. And after the third time, he was very confused. And he looked at Abba Antony and said, why are you asking me to do this? If I keep shooting these arrows at this rate and at this pace over and over and over again, eventually my bow is going to break. And to that, Abba Antony responded by saying, this is how it is with the work of God. If we stretch ourselves beyond measure, we too will also break. The reason why I bring this up is because I know a lot of us are at that breaking point ourselves. We're very tired. We've been running very fast and uh, very hard for a really long time. And so we're drained. Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to give ourselves away to others. And, and it takes a lot of energy to do that, especially at a time like this when there's so much commotion, so much chaos, so much confusion, so much uncertainty. And so for each and every one of us who are weary and tired and overwhelmed and stressed out by life, Jesus offers to us the gift of rest for our soul. And there's nothing more important that you can do for yourself, for your family, for your church, for your ministry, than to learn how to abide in this rest that God offers to the soul. Uh, our culture has taught us that rest is something that can only be experienced after it has been earned. But the truth is, the rest that God has to offer us is a rest that is always available. It's always freely given. It's always accessible. It's as close to us as our very breath. In fact, I like to say every conscious breath is a prayer. Any moment that you can get outside of your head... <laughs> And get into your heart and open yourself up to the love of God and the grace of God in this moment is a moment that you can experience the eternal rest that the gospel offers to your soul. It was Jesus who said in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. See, to rest in God is to rest our mind in the present moment. I love how uh, some of the monastics would put it when they said, Every day our goal and our desire is to stand before God with our mind in our heart. In other words, to be at rest is to be at peace within ourselves. And this kind of rest can only be experienced when we are willing to give ourselves over to God in absolute dependence, trusting in the love of God, the providence of God, and the care of God over our lives. So many of us are stuck in the future. We're fearful and we're anxious about things that we cannot control. It's better to leave the future in the hands of God. So many of us are stuck in these cycles and these loops of guilt and shame and regret because we're replaying things that we did in the past and we're, we're uh, rehashing all of the ways that we've done things that are harmful to ourselves and others. And we forget the wonderful truth that our past has been swallowed up in the infinite love and mercy of God and that every moment is a new beginning. Every moment we are given the grace to begin again. And so the invitation for each and every one of us is to enter into this rest that has already been given to us and that does not have to be earned, but that can only be accessed through the presence of God within the soul. As we grow in our awareness of God's presence within us, we grow in this rest and we experience this rest in a, in a heightened sense. And so Jesus said, there are two Two postures of the soul that are required in order for us to experience rest. And that is the posture of gentleness and the posture of open-heartedness. So, first and foremost, I hope you're being gentle with yourself. Listen, there is no right or wrong way to handle yourself in this situation of life right now. None of us know what we're doing. All of us are figuring it out as we go. There are a bunch of emotions that all of us are experiencing right now. Instead of judging yourself for having those emotions, instead of criticizing yourself for feeling the way that you do, learn how to observe your emotions from a place of awareness and simply be present to everything that's happening within you and allow yourself to feel what it is that you're feeling. 
don't beat yourself up for what you're not doing or for what you did wrong or for what you could be doing better. Instead, be gentle with yourself. You are God's beloved. And even if you didn't lift another finger from now until your dying day, in God's eyes, you are already more than enough. Secondly, live your life with a sense of humble, open-heartedness. I always remind myself, an open mind is an open heart. A closed mind is a closed heart. So stay open. Uh, right now, everything is uncertain. Right now, we, we don't know what the future has in store. And guess what? That's the best place that we could possibly be in. Because when, when we are forced to relinquish our control, that's when we have no other option but to trust in God. And so through this open-heartedness, that is when you begin to access the peace that God has in store for you. So I hope and I pray that you will find rest for your souls, that you would be gentle with yourself, that you would remain open-hearted, and that you would allow the Spirit of God to fill you even now with every breath that you take. God bless you. Good evening, CBF family. It is a privilege to be here with you on this night where we are celebrating the impact that CBF has had on Young Baptists. I'm John Mark Bowes, and I serve as the Advocacy and Global Mission Specialist for CBF. However, tonight, my role is not about working for CBF. I'm here because of the impact that CBF has had on my life. When talking to folks about my connection with CBF, I frequently describe myself as coming from the first generation of folks who have been born and raised in the fellowship. I was there in 1991 as a two-year-old. By my count, I've only missed three general assemblies throughout my whole life. As the son of a Baptist pastor, each summer our family would pack up and drive to wherever assembly was. Drives to Texas for, from Kentucky were particularly enthralling, let me say. These were our family vacations in the summer. I was introduced early on to what it meant to be a missions-oriented, moderate Baptist. We always found a way to have fun, but I re never realized the significance that General Assembly would take on for me. After my parents' divorce, my mother still made it a point to make sure that my sister and I would continue to be connected in the CBF world. Whether it was attending the annual CBF Kentucky gathering at General Assembly or General Assembly, the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship became home for us. Then, we were part of a new church start in Elizabethtown, Kentucky, Living Faith Baptist Fellowship. Whether it was our early preachers of the month from folks like John Lepper or Rick Landon, or attending our first youth event in Kentucky and having to be reminded what our church's name was, I was all in for CBF. Then, as I was preparing to graduate from college, I asked myself what I was going to do. I knew that CBF had guided me to be caring for and helping others. So that's what I did taught high school math in three year, for three years in Atlanta. But the impact of CBF on my life was far from done. After moving to Atlanta, my wife-to-be, Allison, and I met Bo and Gail Prosser. They quickly became our Sunday school teachers, friends, mentors, and most importantly, our Atlanta parents. Bo would frequently challenge me saying, when are you going to seminary? What Bo doesn't know is that I'd always said at some point, I would do just that. After his frequent cajoling, I finally relented. I attended the Candler School of Theology at Emory University, graduating in 2017. Candler is a partner seminary with CBF. Throughout my time at Candler, I worked as a student worker at CBF. Upon my graduation, I was offered a full-time position and have remained there to this day. Some of you might be saying that that's all well and good, but why does this matter? Well, Bo has a saying that goes something like this. People go where they know they are prepared for and cared for. As I've reflected on the impact of CBF in my life, one thing is clear. CBF has prepared for me and cared for me. They offered me space to find home. CBF continues to demonstrate care for myself and young Baptists like me. CBF has continually emphasized the value of preparing young Baptists, both laity and clergy. You see, my story is not my story without CBF. 
And that is something that I am proud to say out loud. I've wondered about how I would close out this section. What can I say about CBF that shows my thankfulness but also seeks to call us into deeper faithfulness and engagement with, with Young Baptists in the future. We must continue to prepare for and care for Young Baptists. Now, I know, that this, I know that this is not the challenge segment of this week's program, but this isn't a challenge. It is continuing to fulfill the holy work that Jesus calls us. CBF offered me space to become who I am today at a time when that didn't seem to be available in other places. I think of the good work that my colleagues and friends, Davida Parnell and Diane Moore, are doing to engage young Baptists and to create space for young Baptists to explore their calling, all while working towards building the kingdom of God. I think of the impact that programs like Student.Go and Student.Church have on young Baptists, congregations, and communities throughout the summer. I think of the impact that scholarships for young Baptists are having. I think of the impact that there is just by saying we are going to have a Young Baptist ecosystem, a place where Young Baptists can learn, grow, and be formed. But most of all, I think of how my faith journey has been positively impacted by the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. So, as we go, join me in supporting and engaging Young Baptists in your communities of faith. Join me in continuing to prepare for and care for Young Baptists. Let us continue to find new ways of forming young Baptists like I continue to be formed. Now let us pray. For a fellowship that values young Baptists, we give thanks. For a fellowship that creates space for young Baptists to find their calling, we give thanks. For a fellowship that supports education for young Baptists, we give thanks. God, call us into deeper fellowship and engagement with young Baptists. Continue to make this beloved community a place that places value on young Baptists. Continue to call us to prepare for and care for young Baptists. And may we all to continue to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, my name is Hannah, and I am a new gsc -er in Raleigh, North Carolina, working with Mark and Kim Wyatt um, at Welcome House. So Welcome House is a welcoming place, and it's also a house. Um, so the main vision and mission of Welcome House is temporary housing for refugees, immigrants, and asylum seekers who find themselves in the United States. Um, but our mission and vision and resources extend past that to our clients and our new neighbors. Um, we provide ESL classes um, in a world that's not struck by a pandemic. We have um, preschool readiness. Uh, we also collect donations from church communities and other communities in the area to furnish new homes for our clients, um, as well as bridging that gap between the church community and the international community here in Raleigh. Um, so my role here is to be the best asset that I can be for Welcome House and its mission, um, whether that be for Mark and Kim, for the volunteers, which are the backbone of us, and then as well as um, the clients themselves. So I think one of the biggest things that I've had the opportunity to learn um, through volunteering with other refugee organizations, as well as now helping with Welcome House, is that you have to be willing and okay to step out of your comfort zone, which can be really scary. And it is scary um, because we like being comfortable and feeling um, safe. Uh, but I think as Christians, especially, we have to be able to recognize when we're in that comfort zone and be willing to step out to meet to meet the marginalized um, and to meet people who n wouldn't necessarily cross our paths. Because I think if you look at scripture, that is something that becomes so prominent in Jesus's life. Um, when he reaches out to people, he moves towards them. Um, he doesn't wait for them to come to him. So something I'm going to challenge myself to do this week is to sort of reflect a little on what my comfort zone looks like, um, as well as 
pushing and challenging that zone a little. And I would love to invite you into that challenge with me. Um, and you might be saying, well, Hannah, we're in the middle of a pandemic. And yes, we want to stay safe and we want to stay distance and we want to wear masks. But I think there are a lot of creative and cool opportunities in this season um, to collectively come together in different ways than we're used to um, and ways in which we can still get our hands dirty and do the good work. So in this season that feels a lot like waiting, um, let us not grow weary. Um, God is moving and he is working and he is preparing us. And there is purpose where your feet are right here and now. Um, so I pray, I pray that you have a blessed week. Um, and thank you.